Hey guys, I'm Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be balancing chemical equations in order to satisfy the law of conservation of mass. By the end of the video, what I would expect you to be able to do is, in the level of problems that we're doing, is to balance all of our chemical equations and understand why we're doing that, to satisfy the law of conservation of mass. Just some general terms in order to uh, educate you before we begin this video. As we begin the new unit on chemical reactions, reactants are the starting products in any chemical reaction. And they're going to do something. They're going to form a product. A product is something that is always produced. And this arrow here, this arrow means to produce. Okay? Over here, the plus sign always means to react. So I can say iron reacts with oxygen to produce a new compound known as iron oxide. So I have reactants on the left hand side, products on the right hand side. The law of conservation of mass simply says the number of atoms in the reactants, that's on the left hand side, must equal the number of atoms in the product. And what I want you to see here is really clearly I have one atom of iron over here and I have two over here. And it's going to be kind of strange for any reaction to happen and end up with more atoms of one than you started with. And so this equation here clearly shows that I've also increased my number of options from two to three. And that normally doesn't happen. Okay? That never happens. The law of conservation of mass says the number of atoms over here must equal the number of atoms over there. What we'll be doing today is putting in coefficients. Coefficients are large numbers. These uh, large whole numbers appear prior to the elements or the compounds and what they do they multiply they multiply against the subscript and when I do that it helps me to balance the reactions by making the number of atoms in the reactants equal to the number in the products from this point out in the video onward we're going to simply be doing examples and balancing chemical equations once you get the hang of it feel free to you know turn the video off but if you need to continue to tune in for extra practice feel free to jump in too. At any point along the way, what a good idea for you to do would be to press pause, try the problem on your own, and then continue. The first thing I have to look at here is, are the reactants and the products balanced? And I think what we're all going to see is oxygen. I have two atoms here, and somehow I lost an atom over here. One rule I'm going to impress upon you is that you cannot change the subscripts. The subscripts, wherever there is none, are one. You're not allowed to change that. The only thing you're allowed to do is to put whole number coefficients which are used as multipliers against the subscripts in front of each of these. Let me show you how. Okay, if I look at the oxygens, I see I have two oxygens right here. So as it stands right now, my multiplier or coefficient is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. I need to have that same number over here because right now it's just a 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And I can't have that. I need two oxygens. So what I'm going to do is say 2. 2 times 1 is 2 oxygens. So now I have 2 oxygens on the right-hand side, and 1 times 2, 2 oxygens on the left-hand side. So my number of oxygens in the reactants right now is equal to the number of the products. But one thing I want to express, though, is that this 2 is also distributed into the carbon. So right now I have 2 times 1 is 2 carbons. And over here, I need to have the same identical number. And the multiplier I will use is 2, 2 times 1. What does this tell me? Honestly, chemical reactions are nothing more than recipes. Seriously, they're nothing more than recipes. What I'm telling you here is that I need two carbon atoms in order to react with one molecule of O2. And when that happens, I end up with a change, a chemical change. This means produce. I'm going to produce now two molecules of carbon monoxide. Once again, all I'm trying to do is make a recipe. The recipe is trying to make a product. Here we go, guys, another example. Well, first thing I look at here, I see the sodiums. Sodiums are not balanced. I have one sodium over here and two over here. I have two oxygens, and there's a subscript of one, one oxygen. Where do we begin? You can begin on any element you choose. You simply are not allowed to change the subscripts. The subscripts are the small numbers. You are allowed to, however, add coefficients, which are simply multipliers. Let's begin. Why not just begin with oxygen, okay? So if you look at oxygen, I have two oxygens here and one over here. So clearly, I need to put a multiplier here. The multiplier must make this times this equal to my these two combined. So right now, it's 1 times 2 gives me 
two oxygens. I have two O's. Over here, I need that as well. And my multiplier is going to be 2. 2 times 1 gives me 2 O's. So if I look at the law of conservation of mass, 2 O's equal 2 O's. They're satisfied. But remember that 2 is also distributed into sodium as well. 2 times 2 is 4 sodiums. So over here, I have 4 Na. Over here, though, as it stands, there is a 1. 1 times 1 is 1 Na. So right now, I have 1 Na. And I don't need that. I need 4. So the question is, what do I multiply this 1 by in order to achieve 4? You guessed it, 4. 4 times 1 gives me 4 Na's. The law of conservation of mass should be satisfied. 4 atoms of sodium react with 1 molecule of O2 to produce yield create form. 2 molecules, I'm sorry, 2 formula units of an ionic compound known as sodium oxide. Okay, guys, we're seeing some different numbers here. Once again, I, I click... Uh, quick view of this, we'll see that the sulfurs don't match up. 8 and 2 do not match up at all. But I do know they have a number in common. I do know they have a number in common. All right, so right now, I have one here, a one here, and a one here. And that should be a one. It looks like a crazy seven, but it really should be a one. I apologize for that, guys. All right, so right now, it's one times eight gives me eight sulfurs, and one times one gives me one carbon, and 1 times 2 gives me 2 sulfurs. Now, I need sulfurs, though, to increase to 8. Right now, over here, I do have 1 carbon as well. So the question is, what can I multiply the 2 by in order to get the 8? And the answer is 4. 4 times 2 gives me 8 sulfurs. That's actually an 8 now. But 4 distributed into the 1 carbon give me 4 carbons. All right, I need 4 carbons over here as well. So my subscript is a 1. I need to change this to a 4 times 1 to give me 4 carbons. A little assessment. Does the left side equal the right side? 4 carbons? 4 carbons. Awesome. 8 sulfurs. 8 sulfurs. We'll give ourselves a check plus on that one, guys. All right. On the next one, please try to press pause. Do the problem by yourself. Check with me for the answer. Okay, a, a quick little view here, and I see the oxygens uh, are not lining up for us. The law of conservation of mass is not satisfied. I have more atoms in the product somehow than I do in the reactant. So we can't have that. So let's go ahead and start adding some coefficients in here. I'm going to start with oxygen. I have 2 and 5. Now clearly 2 cannot go into 5 in a whole number. So I have to find a whole number that I can put here. And the question really becomes is what numbers do 2 and 5 have in common? What is the lowest common multiple? And the lowest common multiple is 10. So I need a 5 times 2 is 10 oxygens, and a 2 times 5 is 10 oxygens. Sometimes it's good to keep track of that down here. I have 10 oxygens, or over here I have 10 oxygens. Maybe you need to do that. Okay, You can. Go ahead. How about the nitrogens? 2 times 2 is 4 nitrogens, and you can put that down here too, 4 nitrogens. And over here, right now I only have 2 nitrogens, but I need 4. And the coefficient I'll use is 2 times 2 to give me 4 nitrogens. So nitrogens are balanced, as well as oxygens. The law of conservation of mass has been satisfied. Two molecules of nitrogen react with five molecules of oxygen to produce, create, or yield two molecules of dinitrogen pentoxide. Last example that I do want to do tonight with you is going to be this example. If I check this out, I see it definitely needs some adjusting right now, and I'm just going to go ahead and say I need some aluminums, because I have two over here and I have one over here. I'm just going to multiply that by 2. 2 times 1 gives me 2 aluminums. Awesome. Over here, presently, it's a 1 times 2 is 2 aluminums. That's awesome, right? They match up now. Love conservation of mass has been satisfied temporarily, probably. Temporarily. We'll double check that at the very end. If I look over here, though, I have 8 and 3. And I know that clearly 3 doesn't go into 8. But I understand they have a number that they multiply in common. And the number they both go into and will multiply into is 24. And 24 doesn't go here. The number that goes there is the multiplier. 3 times 8 gives me 24. And likewise, over here, it's not going to be 24 times 3. It's going to be 8 times 3 to give me 24. So now I have 24 sulfurs. 24 sulfurs. I hope you understand now that the aluminums have been altered. I've changed the coefficient. And now 8 times 2 gives me not 2 aluminums anymore, Scratch that off, 16 aluminums. 
So if I have 16 aluminums in the products, I need 16 aluminums over here. Let's scratch that 2 off. The question is what times 1 gives me 16? Yes, 16 times 1. 16. And a quick assessment, 16 aluminums, I have that over here too. 24 S's, have that over there. Guess what? Law of conservation of mass has been satisfied. I've balanced the chemical reaction correctly. Case closed. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. If you need any review, please feel free to rewind, redo the lesson, try these examples yourself. All right. Best wishes, and thanks a lot for tuning in tonight. Bye-bye.